Hey, what's up guys? So in this video, I'm going to show you how to um, set up Webpack to use Browser Sync and to also enable Browser Sync to work um, uh, to work along with the Webpack dev server. So you're going to kind of have two local servers running at the same time. You're going to have the Webpack dev server and you're going to have the Browser Sync server. But Browser Sync offers a whole bunch of really, really awesome features um, in addition to the Webpack server. It just kind of takes it to like a whole different level. So let me show you kind of how to set that up. Again, these links are down here on the repo. So this is just a browser sync and this is to the plugin. So if you want to find out more about browser sync the, itself, and you don't have to use it just with Webpack, you can use this in all different kinds of tools. Um, this is the documentation and the website for that. But this is the plugin that we're going to be um, using specifically. So first we have to install the plugin, and we also need to install browser sync. Yarn add dash D browser sync and that plugin. So we're installing both the browser sync webpack plugin and browser sync itself. Okay, and then if you scroll down here, we're basically just going to be copying this code right here. Um, yeah, let's get rid of that. It's just easier for me to copy and paste than rather type that all in front of you. It's kind of boring anyways. Just go to that GitHub repo and copy it. Um, let's do this. We're going to add another plugin. So we're using Browser Sync plugin. Now the only thing, basically what's going to happen is we're going to proxy the Webpack dev middle, the, the, the Webpack dev server. So Browser Sync is essentially just going to take everything that the webpack dev server is doing and just send it over to browser sync. The only thing we have to change though is I believe I think the port is 8080. I'm not 100%. Yeah, okay. So, we just have to modify this. See how it says localhost and then it's port 3100. We need to do 8080 because this is the proxy. So, we're telling it to just use the webpack devil mint like browser sync acts as a proxy for the webpack middle like dev server. Um, so if we run this, so if you notice now we have two tabs that it got. Um, let me do that again because it already had some open. Let me do it one more time. It's going to open two tabs for us. So. 8080, this is the dev server, and now it says connected to browser sync. This is browser sync. Um, now, you don't actually need both of these to be open at the same time. It's kind of unnecessary, so you can turn that off. Remember, in here we have this dash dash open. So now, if we shut that off, only browser sync should open. Okay, so now just browser sync opens. So now we have browser sync set up and working. Um, the cool thing about browser sync is that let me uh, you can like basically I can get this working on my phone. So now I can check for responsive stuff. So if I go to my phone, there's a couple things. So here's our local. This is the, the um, port on our local machines. This external one is the one that I'm after. So if I just navigate to 192.168, yeah, I've already got it. So this external basically means you can connect to this server. Any device can connect to this server that's on the same Wi-Fi network. So now if you can see in my phone, it's not much to see, it's just a green screen, but now I have access to, so now I can check this app on an actual device. So if I have an iPad or bunch of different phones things like that I can check on my responsive stuff and the cool stuff too is like as I scroll on my phone it's actually going to scroll the same thing in real time on all the other devices so that's kind of how you set up browser sync with webpack um, but I barely scratched, scratched the surface of what browser sync can do 
just go to that link, check out their website, read the documentation, and see like all this cool stuff that it offers. One last thing is there's also a cool little UI that gets launched too. Um, so there's all kinds of different settings that get launched that you can have. You can add different plugins. Um, you can add like, there's like grids. There's all kinds of cool stuff. So again, here's the website, browsersync.io. And that's how you set up browser sync with Webpack. And um, I personally use it all the time. I use it in addition to the uh, the dev server. I just think it's a lot better. It adds a whole bunch of new features and uh, highly recommend it.